Hi guys, welcome. Let's get to talk about running a sync adapter when data changes with Firebase Cloud Messaging. There are three peculiar ways you would like to trigger a sync adapter. Firstly, when server data changes, when device data changes, and the third one at intervals. You should be familiar with setting an interval for your sync adapter to run which we have covered together in previous tutorials. This time we will have a full grip of how to trigger or run your sync adapter when data changes from the server using the Firebase Cloud Messaging notification. Let's get started. We're still right there on the Fragrance Cat source code where we actually built uh, the sync adapter framework right there on top of this particular uh, class or let's say projects. Now we're going to integrate Firebase Cloud Messaging so that we'll trigger the sync adapter account uh, when data changed from the JSON file we have right there on the server. This is actually uh, the, the best approach to actually trigger your sync adapter. If you are having data changing uh, frequently right there on the server, you set up a Firebase cloud messaging and uh, that's actually going to uh, send a notification down to your to devices running your application uh, in turn which will trigger the uh, sync adapter to actually sync uh, data from the server for you to actually have firebase running on your uh, source or your project uh, right there in android studio is quite simple firstly you need to uh, sign up to an account you have to uh, log in into your google account right there at the top right corner after that uh, you move to tools and you click on firebase which you actually bring out the assistant drawer or uh, firebase now you up for the cloud messaging you click on set up firebase cloud messaging uh, you have to actually complete some steps here the first step is to connect your app to firebase the second is to add FCM to your app and the third is actually using the, as, uh, the device registration token. We'll talk about that right there in the code. I've completed the two steps, connect to your app via Firebase and also add the FCM dependency to your app. So once you have that, everything will be set out for you. The Google services.json file will be uh, created as well right there in your app directory. After that, create a sub package called Firebase where we are going to uh, have the classes, the two classes, the Firebase message service and the Firebase ID service. So you create a, a class called Firebase message service, which will be ex extending the Firebase messaging service. That's uh, a super class, uh, which will be using some methods. So once you extend these, you need to override the on message receive. Uh, which is very very important here so let's get to look at how this is actually structured uh, but this is when you actually receive the message but before receiving the message you need to set up your token which will be done in the firebase id service that's a special class as well which extends the firebase instance id service and this is actually going to override the on token refresh. So look vividly on how you're going to generate the token. You call the Firebase instance ID service to get the instance and also get the token where you're going to actually save that to a string variable called token. And you need to spill out this right there to the console. And if you're actually pushing it to the server, I've covered uh, how you can actually push your token right there to the server you can actually save it to shared preference afterwards you push it uh, probably with a login process and you push that uh, with the token to the server actually co cover that in a previous tutorial uh, in uh, using the mysql server to actually save your token and at the same time send firebase cloud message from the mysql server so we're actually going to make this simple uh, you're going to actually uh, speed it out right there in the console. So you pick it for up from there, you take it down to the Firebase Cloud Messaging console and send your uh, Firebase 
message so with this uh, log it's actually going to log that to the console and we're going to have the token uh, registered so once you have that set up you need to also register that right there in the manifest the firebase id service very important uh, with the android name which is the google firebase instance id event you have to register that likewise you need to register the firebase message service as well uh, calling the android name google firebase messaging event so once you set up these two uh, services right there in the manifest you're good to go let's get to look at the firebase message service itself we declare the authority uh, since you're going to uh, get uh, access to the content authority uh, from the content provider using the content resolver so you actually have to declare your authority and you might need the account type and the account also the key sync request uh, we're actually going to uh, send uh, the advanced aspect of the of the message from the firebase console where you're going to actually uh, put in the key value pairs now we're going to put in a key which you have it's specified this way a constant with a free with a domain let's say with the account type and the key sync request so this is actually going to be unique to different keys you are actually pointing at because firebase messaging can be used to deliver different forms of message so not only specific to what you really need it for we're just trying to customize this for uh, the sync adapter uh, run so you have it set up and you're good to go on message received an object of the remote message very important now we're going to actually make some tests you get the notification probably if you actually added the notification tie to and notification message uh, by calling the get tie to and calling the get body so to actually extract that uh, from the message uh, the incoming message now this is where we're going to trigger the sync adapter we, we have to test if there's a payload data coming that's a key value pairs data you've attached to your push notification this is where you actually get the data the size definitely the size will be greater than zero if you've actually set up the key value pairs of data so we're actually expecting that and uh, you will also go further to test to be uh, specific on the kind of message you are expecting because you can get different kind of calls or different kind of message from the firebase cloud console so you you have to be specific on which message will trigger your sync adapter so that you won't continually trigger the sync adapter uh, on need when it's not even needed and this can actually uh, amper the app we can uh, drain battery and uh, it's not going to uh, make your app efficient now we are being specific on the key which is the key sync request we've actually created here and it must be equals to the value we are passing in which is sync if it's not definitely you are, we, we, that's not actually uh, pointing at the sync of the the sync adapter so it's actually going to do something different so this is specific to this particular adapter should be equals to the sync message now this is the juicy part you call the content resolver to request the sync there's a method uh, right there uh, where you have to pass in firstly the account get sync account and passing this um, activity or as the parameter and you need the content authority which we specified up there also the extra which is the bundle extras very important is to share the new bundle to actually make that work uh, these three parameters must be set up before you can request an immediate sync of your sync adapter uh, get the sync account pass the context or this keyword the content authority and you instantiate the bundle extras as the third parameter that should be null so that's how you get that done and we have a log so that we'll be able to show that uh, the sync is actually uh, triggered with sync adapter triggered so I'm actually going to test this out right there 
are on a real device but we'll be looking at the messages we're getting from the log which is the android monitor sometimes you call the log cat and this is actually going to uh, help us monitor what kind of messages we're getting if the sync is successful or not so i'm actually going to so let let's head straight to the firebase console to push the first message over here i have a copy of a message so i will just duplicate this and uh make that same message the message text good to know just a demo now the single device is the target so you need to copy the fcm reg registration token that you got from the console that's from the android monitor or the lock cards so you expand the advanced options you can give it title give it testing out and uh, not to forget the custom data this is where you give the key which we actually declared right there in the java class with its value very important called sync so this is just going to be predominant to trigger the sync adapter without that it's not going to work so you have that set up so i will actually be expanding my android monitor so that we'll be able to notice uh what uh, we actually have here so let's put send a message so we have that set up i'll be clicking on send and uh i'll head straight to the android monitor cool if you notice uh let me find let me do a quick find Cool. the sync adapter triggered which we actually need right there in the uh, immediately after the content resolver request the sync we have the log to tag that the sync adapter triggered we have that set up and we have that uh, done and we also have the URL link which started the sync can you notice we have the start sync over here and uh, we also have the items that were inserted if you notice there were errors in certain those items why do why why are we having that uh, we are having this error because uh, we are just uh, replicating the same data we have because we've actually uh, declared a unique key on the uh, fragrance item ID that's why it's very important to have an ID uh, right there with your API this is quite unique to each item you are having your each item you're calling from the JSON so because we have that if you notice the error that we are getting is SQLite constraints exception unique constraint field because we are we want to we're calling the same data nothing has changed on the server that's why we are having these errors so we'll actually do something uh, quickly here we have uh, all the uh, JSON data didn't actually save to the SQLite database. We don't need a replica data right there in the SQLite database. That's why you're having all this bunch of errors. This is not inserting uh, because there is no change. Now we're going to do something here so that we will be have, we'll have a change right there in the JSON. So we'll look if it's actually inserted successfully or not because we have a sync triggered with this uh, flow. I have a JSON here. Now I'll be adding uh some fragrance uh fragrances uh the gucci beauty and i'll also be adding uh dk and wild the delicious so with that i think uh i have that set up already uh let me get to look at the other fragrance which uh it's actually that should be right there in the downloads let's get to look at the fragrance json so i'll compare it with uh the one uh, right there in the cloud so we have that set up so I'll actually be heading straight to the uh, fragrance JSON we have right there in the server let me head straight to there I have it somewhere here. there's the fragrance JSON and uh, we'll be editing so before I'll be editing to add up more uh, fragra fragrance item to to that. So I have it right there. Let me. This, this is the edited copy uh, where I'm going to actually add the Dorsey and Garbana 
and uh, Jimmy Cho. Let me get to copy that. So copy this. I'll head straight back to the editor right there. So we actually stopped at the can wipe delicious. Uh, add the comma and paste in those values. So we're expecting new data. That's the Dorsey and Garbana and Jimmy Cho uh, fragrances. So we have that set up so we can now save changes. We did definitely uh, the fragrance JSON has been updated. We've, uh, we've had two more items added up so we can still trigger that same FCM message. So now let me scroll down so that we'll be able to have a fresh one and we'll see the item that was actually inserted into the database. So back to the Firebase console. Now I can still duplicate the same message since we want to use it one more time. Uh, this is just for testing purpose. So we're going to have that set up. Cool. We have a single device testing out the same custom data key, which is a uh, value. Now I'm going to push send message again. Click on send. Let's get back. Fine. If you notice, uh, we have the Dorsey and Garbana inserted successfully. Likewise, the Jimmy Cho. Can you see that? This is Dorsey and Garbana and Jimmy Cho. Because uh, they are actually fresh data. And uh, we're actually having that right there in the SQLite database because uh, it's actually triggered from uh, the Firebase Cloud message. The Firebase Cloud message triggers the sync adapter. So this is the best way to handle uh, sync adapter when you are uh, when you have data that change consistently right there on your server. Just create an update. Uh, once uh, there is an update on the database right there on probably your MySQL server, any server that you might be using, uh, you trigger the uh, FCM message that we just push down to the devices installed. Probably you might have gotten uh, their, their, their token when they actually registered or somewhere. So that's just uh, the architecture of achieving a full-blown application with the Android Sync Adaptive Framework. So that is actually going to trigger uh, the content resolver to call on the account, which will trigger uh, the sync adapter right there from the Firebase console, console. So you can actually see the architecture around it. And that's the most recommended way to actually get that done. Uh, this is actually recommended from Google as well. So I'll be showing you the screencast for us to see uh, the inclusion right there in the application. I'm actually using a device. Uh, so it could have been uh, if it, you, if it were an emulator, you'd have seen it refreshed immediately. But with that, from the console, from the lockout, you can easily determine that uh, these values has been inserted successfully into the SQLite database. Uh, from here, you can see the Dorsey and Gabbana and the Jimmy Cho inserted successfully. Even DK and Y2 was inserted. I uh, actually had that uh, included as well. So that's just uh, the whole uh, architecture around the sync adapter when you're trying to sync uh, data uh, from the server, data changes from the server uh, based on the trigger of the Firebase cloud messaging. Thank you guys for hanging out with me throughout uh, this tutorial and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Have a lovely time. Bye bye for now.